discuss the breakout sessions that we had at this year's Arkansas International Camp Meeting. Now, with these breakout sessions, we're actually splitting up and talking about different topics at different times. Monday and Tuesday from 10 to 1130 at our upper campus, we'll be talking about business and leadership. On Monday morning at 10 o'clock, Seth Pomeroy will be discussing how to invest in yourself, how to develop yourself and pour into you so that you can be what God has in store. Right after that, Dr. Zach Ward will be talking about how to invest in the kingdom, how we can give our time, our money, our resources, so we can see the blessings of God flow through us. On Tuesday at 10 a.m., I'll be discussing why you should start a business now. We'll be giving you tools and resources to if you have an idea or a concept, how to pick up and start. Immediately after that, Bo Duty is going to be talking about how failure is not final. How so often we start something, it doesn't work out quite as we plan, we just put it on the shelf and we forget about it. How to pick up and keep on running and see what God has in store for you. And so Monday and Tuesday from 10 to 1130 at our upper campus, we cannot wait to see you there. is Mandy Holmes. Along with my husband, Pastor Nathan Holmes, we want to welcome you to Arkansas International Camp Meeting. We're so happy that you have made Camp Meeting a priority in your summer schedule. We have so many exciting things planned for this year. One new addition is our Ladies' Day on Tuesday, June 6th. We are thrilled to have Pastor Ari Prado from Alameda, California ministering to us. We will meet in the main auditorium at 10 a.m. You will not want to miss this anointed word. I hope to see you there. Arkansas International Camp Meeting is here, and we are so excited about all that's going on. As you know, there are going to be several breakout sessions. The Apostolic Educators Association is covering four topics. The value of apostolic education, apostolic education, a safe place, protecting and developing God's inheritance through apostolic education, and re reaping the residual rewards of apostolic education. So if you are interested in apostolic education or you are already an educator or an administrator, we hope to see you on Monday and Tuesday at our upper campus on North Hills. See you soon.
Pastor Julio May from Memphis, Tennessee. And I want to take this time to invite you to a special session we have planned for this Monday at 10 o'clock in the sanctuary. And that is starting a Spanish speaking ministry. Bishop Holmes and, uh, and myself, along with Pastor Jessica Lindo, feel the need to sh give you tools to help you connect and bridge the gap between the cultures and how you can better uh, reach this community that God has brought to our front door. Hopefully you can be there and we want to share with you what God has shared with us. Praise the Lord, I'm Jaron Brown, and I'm thrilled to invite you to a new kind of minister session that we've called In Conversation with the Bishops. Join me along with Pastor Nathan Holmes this Tuesday at 10 a.m. in the Great Hall as we sit down with none other than Bishops Joe Holmes and Larry Booker. Listen as they share life lessons and insight drawn from over 100 combined years of ministry. Learn about how their failures and successes shaped their lives and brought them to where they are today. In Conversation with the Bishops, happening this Tuesday at 10 a.m. in the Great Hall. Don't miss it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. We're Mike and Marie Jones, missionaries to South Korea and the Philippines. We would like to take this opportunity to greet you in the one.
don't you stand to your feet all across the house and put your hands together in the building. Here we go. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Yes, God. The Lord is beside us. And we cannot lose. Though the shadow.
the morning. All oh, praise to King Jesus. Sing, I know joy is coming. I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Come on, somebody just clap those hands in the sanctuary and thank God for the joy of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So good to see you here today. Why don't you take a moment, turn to someone and greet them in the name of Jesus. Honored you're here. All of the ministry here, all of the saints of God that are here. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. We have a special presentation we're going to present here today. And then afterward, we're going to receive our uh, day service offering. Give you an opportunity to be blessed in your giving here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. We're Mike and Marie Jones, missionaries to South Korea and the Philippines. We would like to take this opportunity to greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Here in South Korea, God's doing wonderful things. In our local church, we're seeing visitors for the first time almost every week. Mm -hmm. This is an international and a multicultural church made up of Koreans, Filipinos, Americans, European, and multiple countries in Africa. In addition, we're working closely with our Korean pastor in Seoul as God has opened the door for him to four Trinitarian pastors who have a great influence over their organization. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In addition to what's going on here in South Korea, we uh, yeah. built a church in the Bicol region of the Philippines. This church is growing. It's already had to be rebuilt and expanded. Now we have the opportunity to purchase a piece of land next to the current church, large enough for a big church, a training center, and dormitories. As God continues to open these doors, we want to be able to go through them and do the will of God. Please continue to pray for us and the work here in South Korea and the Philippines. May God richly bless you. God bless you guys, and thank you all for your support. We love you. We are so honored to have Missionary Jones here with us from South Korea. Not only did he greet you here today, but he's in the sanctuary today. We love and appreciate him very, very much. And all of the missionaries that are here, we give God praise for your being here. So ushers, if you will, come at this time. We're going to receive our offering. They're going to sing. Let's worship God again here in this house today. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We feel already in this sanctuary. We pray that you would bless this offering. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Yeah. 
name of Jesus, come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come on, somebody lift up your hands in the sanctuary.
clap of thanksgiving for his goodness, for his blessings, for his faithfulness. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord, all ye people. Glorify him now. Lift up your voice of praise. Lift up your voice of thanksgiving. We bless your holy name, O righteous God. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Just remain standing. The man of God is fixing to come to bring the word of the Lord. And I uh, thank God for his presence. If you missed the session this morning, you missed a great time. My, what an amazing job these brothers did today, Brother Delingo and Brother May. Uh, thank God for having a vision to want to reach all nations and all people. And that's what the church is here to do. And you know, I was just thinking, did you know you can evangelize right here today? You need to do it quick. You need to do it quick. Like, take your phone. You know somebody that's backslid, your community? Text them. Say, tune in. FPC slash NR in LR dot com. Tune in. Hopefully they'll tune in tonight and, and uh, tune in right now. Hallelujah. You know what I love about meeting great people? They introduce you to other great people. And now, some 20 years ago, I was walking back through the audience, shaking hands, the end of the service, met Brother Tilly. And uh, he said, I'm from Norway. I said, well, I'm fixing to go to Norway on vacation. Well, that's all you needed to tell Brother Tilly. And he took over. He, he lined me out uh, where to go, what to do, and, and then his son in the gospel, uh, Brother Andres, and he had told him, he said, you be at that hotel, you pick them up, you show them around Norway. And it was a great time, great day in my life. So been so richly blessed all these years. The ministry of this great man of God has a great Two churches there, other outreach, five. Sorry, I'm getting behind. Five churches uh, reaching that nation. And, uh, you know, he could come over here and start a church. Because I don't know if you've ever heard Brother Andreasen, but you're going to be blessed. He's truly a man of God. He loves this great truth. And we're just so highly honored to have him here with us today. Amen. I wish you'd give him a great big old camp meeting welcome to Brother Andres and as he comes here today to obey the word. Are we going to help him preach? Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Don't you feel the presence of God in this place right now? Can we just close our eyes and just thank Him for a moment? Lord, we thank You. I thank You, Lord, hallelujah, for Your many blessings, for Your kindness and goodness, and for Your love, Lord. Thank You for being so good to us, Lord. I pray that You be with us today, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I feel so very, very honored to stand behind this pulpit today and uh, so thankful for Pastor Holmes and his family, and what a great, great example him and his church is, and uh, what a great blessing he's been to my life. Thank you, Pastor Holmes, for trusting in me and giving me this opportunity, and thank you for being such a great leader. Amen. You are a great inspiration for all of us in Norway. Amen. We can't wait to have you with us in just a few months from now. Amen. And uh, Bishop Holmes, I don't know what to say, but... It's just, I love this man so much. I love you so much. I, I take a bullet for you. I would do that any day. And uh, I'm so thankful for this church and for the love that you show me through the years and for the great example that you are. Amen. And uh, why don't we just give a great hand of appreciation to the leadership of this church. Hallelujah.
I honestly don't know where I would have been today if it hadn't been for you, uh, Bishop, and for your voice in my life. Thank you for being my mentor and for a vo voice in my life. And uh, all the other ministers that is here, amen, so glad and honored to be here with you. And uh, glad to have Benedicta and Victoria with me today. Didn't Benedicta do a good job today singing? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to have my wife on the streaming. Amen. I love you. I miss you. And also I know that there's a lot of people from Norway also tuning in and watching. You do sing that all the time. I hope that all the time will be for my yes or no. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles today, if you can turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we will read some very familiar verses of Scripture from verse number 1. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse number 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the clouds and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and were all And did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank out of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And then verse number six. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after the evil things, as they also lusted. And then verse number 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonitions, upon whom the ends of the world are come. I mean, I guess he's talking about us, upon whom the ends of the world are come. He said that these things happened for our examples, and they were written down for our admonitions. Amen. I just want to remind you before we pray here today that the stories in the Old Testament is not just stories that just happened. The stories that uh, Paul in particular is referring to right here in the book of 1 Corinthians is the story of the great exodus out of Egypt. And, and he's, he's reminding them that this story of the exodus, is, it was not just something that just randomly happened, but it was orchestrated by God. God planned it and he orchestrated it and he had people write the story down in order for you and I to have an example today that we can read and we can understand some principles that is important for us To have with us. When God parted the Red Sea and they walked through the Red Sea in that spectacular scene as between two and three million people walked through the, 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 the Red Sea and having a wall on water upon each side of them, it was not just to make a shortcut over to the promised land. It was not just to to give them something to tell their grandchildren. But God had something else in mind. He had the church in mind. He had you and I in mind. He wanted us to give us an example on how we should be saved. <laughs> Praise Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count my point. I realize I'm going to take a little time to get my point here. So I have preached many, many times from this story and of course many other stories in the Old Testament, but particularly this story about the Exodus out of Egypt. And there's so many great lessons to learn from this story. And, and I'm sure you that are a minister here, you've preached about this so many times, and especially when it comes to the plan of salvation. But for, for a time ago, God brought my attention to something that I have never seen before. I saw something in this story and God started to teach me and, and, and reveal to me some things that I've never have paid attention to before. And that is that when Pharaoh, amen, when, when Moses came to Pharaoh and demanded for him to let the people go. Of course, first Pharaoh, he denied them and he said, absolutely not. There was not a chance and he was ever going to let them go. But then God started to display his power. God started to reveal his power, amen, to Egypt and to Pharaoh. And he started to be pushed into a corner. And then suddenly he started to come with some confessions. I was debating with myself what to call this sermon today. Uh, if I should call it the, the confessions of Pharaoh. But he started to confess some things and admit some things. 
But as he was confessing, amen, and, and admitting some things to, to Moses, and he also invited Moses into negotiation with him. He tried to get Moses to sit down at the table of negotiation, and he tried to give him some offers in order to change the plan of God. He wanted to somehow corrupt God's plan by implementing his own ideas and his own thoughts into God's plan. But the powerful thing in the story of the exodus out of Egypt is that every time that Moses withstood the temptation of going into any kind of compromise with Pharaoh, that's when God displayed his power over Egypt. I just want to remind you today that there is no such a thing that negotiation with Pharaoh. There is no such a thing that sitting down at the table of negotiation with Pharaoh. We got nothing to negotiate about. We are only here to tell him about what we are going to do. We are only going to inform him. We are not planning to sit down and, and, and debate with him. The only one that I'm planning to negotiate with is, is God. Because I'm not going to reason with Pharaoh, but I will reason with God because God has invited me, amen, to reason. He said, come, let us reason together. Come sit down by my table and let's reason together. If your sins are like scarlet, I'm going to make them white as snow. That's the kind of table of negotiation I want to sit, sit with. But for Pharaoh, I have only one message, and I have one message that I want to share with you here today, that there is no compromise with Pharaoh. No compromise with Pharaoh. If you want to stand to your feet right now and help me pray for this message, hallelujah. If you believe that there is no compromise with Pharaoh, why don't you lift up your hands, hallelujah. Close your eyes and, and ask God to talk to us today in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. He korishi para kantori alarabahaye sikitienda. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. So the story of the Exodus, and I'm not going to take time to read all of the scriptures here today, but, but you start the story in Exodus chapter 3 when the Bible says that God came to Moses in a burning bush. And God started to talk to Moses and he said that I have heard the prayers of my people. I have heard and I've seen their affliction. And I have now come down, amen, to, to, to save them and to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. Hallelujah. I'm glad for the power of prayer. I want to encourage every mother, every father, hallelujah, every pastor, every minister, every saint to keep on praying because God does listen to prayer, hallelujah. And there's going to come a time, hallelujah, when we pray and we don't give up, we cry out to God in faith and God's going to hear our prayer and He will come down. He will come down. And so God said, I have now come down and I've come to deliver my people. However, God didn't go Himself. But instead, he said to Moses, I'm sending you. I'm sending you, Moses, to do the job, but I will be with you. Several times you find it in chapter 3 that God told Moses in chapter 4, I will be with you. Not only did promise, not only did God promise Moses, not only did God promise Moses to be with him, but he said, I will put my power upon you. And he said, with this staff, with this rod, you're going to do the signs and the wonders. So he gave him a staff. And he said, with this staff, you're going to do the signs. And I'm sending you and I'll be with you. Does this sound familiar to you? That God came down from heaven, robed himself in flesh to seek and to save that which was lost. And he said, hallelujah, I'm not going to go myself, but I'm going to send you. But I will be with you. Lo, I'll be with you every day. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to give you empty handed. Hallelujah. I'm going to put my name upon you. And with my name, you're going to do these signs and wonders and miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to do the job. Go get my people out of Egypt. There's so many things that we can do in church and there's so many activities and ministries and things in church. But the bottom line is this. We are here to get people out of Egypt. 
That's why we're here. And that's why I'm preaching today, hallelujah, is because my main mandate is to get people out of Egypt. But I want to draw your attention to verse number 19 in chapter 3. Because God said to Moses, and listen, chapter 3 and verse number 19. I am sure, God said, that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. The Norwegian version says, not unless he experienced my mighty hand upon him. So God told Moses, I'm sending you. I'll be with you. My power is going to be with you. You're going to do it. You have my promise. But I want you to know something. There will be some resistance. It's not going to come easy, Moses. And I want you to understand that the king of Egypt, which is only a picture of the king of this world, which is the devil. Amen. He will not so easily let them go. There will be some resistance. And that's why. I have designed my power to be with you. Because God said, and listen to this today. God said to Moses that the only way that Pharaoh is going to let them go is that he feels and experiences my mighty hand upon him. And please don't misunderstand what I'm about to say. I don't, I, I don't want you to misunderstand, and I'm saying this first before I say what I'm going to say, is that I believe in education. I believe in studying. I believe in, in trying to do everything we can to, to study, to make ourselves approved. And all, I believe in all of that. I'm not against degrees and studies. I'm not against that. But Moses, he was worried about what do I going to say. He was worried about the words that he was going to say to Pharaoh. He remembered, I know about the wisdom of Egypt. I know what I'm going to face when I come into the, into the, into the halls of Pharaoh. I know when I get all the wisdom, all the wise people is going to come and confront me. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a man of, of excellent speech. I, I don't have the right words to say, God. I don't know how to speak and talk. But God was trying to tell Moses, it's not your words that is going to convince him anyway. He's not going to let them go by fancy words. He's not going to let them go by your fancy speech. It's only when I display my power. Let you listen to me today. Unless we got the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Pharaoh is never going to let them go. We need the power. That's why God, hallelujah, that's why Jesus told the disciples, you go up to the upper room and you wait until you receive power from on high, hallelujah. That's when you're ready, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We need churches, hallelujah, with miracles. We need churches when people are being filled with the Holy Ghost. We need churches with wonders and signs. That's what we need. You're never going to debate anybody to heaven. You're never going to talk anybody out of, the, out of Egypt. It's going to come with power. And it's going to come with demonstration. So Moses, he goes. And when he comes to Egypt, just like God said, I am surprised that he was surprised. Because when you read the story, Moses, he starts to complain to God. He's not willing to let them go. God's like, I told you. As a matter of fact, the very first thing that Pharaoh did when they said, we want to go worship him. He said, are you just lazy? That's what you are. So I'm going to double your workload. You're going to do twice as much as you do today. And, and in the Norwegian Bible, it says, so you don't want to have time to say, let's go worship. Anytime you make up your mind to worship God, anytime you make up your mind to do something more, to pray more, read your Bible more, study more, anytime you make up your mind, I'm going to go evangelize, I'm, I'm going to do something for God. The devil says, oh, you just, you're just not busy enough. I'm going to make you busy. Say. 
Suddenly you get something happen at your job, you have to work overtime. Some, something happened to your home. Something happened in your family. You have to go to this place. You have to go to that place. You try to win somebody. You invite them to church. Sure enough, something's going to come up. And they can't come to that service. They really want to come. But, but something just came up. It's just that step number one. Hallelujah. Don't give up. It's just that step number one. He's going to resist you. But you go on. Hallelujah. We have a mandate. We're going to get him out of Egypt. We can't give up so easy. If I can say something here very, very quickly, and that is that it's not just sin that is our enemy, but it's time. You know, when you scrolling on your phone and you sit with your iPad and you just flipping through the entertainment, it's not just the danger of what you are watching. It's not just the danger that you're watching some sinful thing. and that, it, that is, of course, we know that. But just the very fact that you are killing two, three, four, five hours without doing nothing, just stupid entertainment and nothing else. Time that you can use in prayer. Time that you can use to witness for somebody. Time that you can use for the kingdom. And the devil is just making you occupied. He's saying, you're not busy enough. I'm going to make sure you don't worship. I'm going to make sure you don't pray. Let's declare war against Pharaoh today and say, hey, I'm going to be conscious about my time. I'm going to be careful the way I spend my time. And so, Moses made it clear to Pharaoh that that game doesn't work with me. We are set in our mind that we will worship God. We're going to go worship God. And you, you can't stop us. And here is the interesting thing. And is that in the beginning, Pharaoh, he made it sound like that I am in complete control. I can stop you whenever I want to stop. If I say you can't go, you can't go. If I say you can't worship, you can't worship. And uh, so he tried to control the situation. And, and this is the thing. When, when Moses came back to his people, you know, he, he had a, not, a good, not good news. But he got some bad news. That your, your situation has just got twice as bad. Well, thank you for coming, Moses. Why don't you just leave us alone? You just made the situation worse. Have you ever tried to lead somebody to the truth? I have a dear friend of mine. I think he's watching right now. He's, he's a pastor in the city of Tunsberg in Norway. If you're watching, Pastor Joseph, I'm praying for you. Hallelujah. And uh, this pastor friend of mine, he, he, he pastors a charismatic church in Tunsberg. And, and, and God revealed the baptism in Jesus' name for him. And so he asked me, he said, would you please come and teach my congregation about the necessity of being baptized in Jesus' name? And I said, sure. And so I went to his church and I, I preached for his church. And now the majority of his church um, is being baptized in Jesus' name. But then, just a couple of weeks ago, when we were together, as we sat side by side, a text message just kicked in, ticked into his phone, and he showed me. And he was the leader of the Christian council, the, the, the council of the Christian churches in Norway. And, he, and the text message said this, I see that you are with Pastor Andreasen. I just want to warn you that this man doesn't believe in the Trinity. Well, it didn't take long until doors started to close for him and, and, and his revival started to be canceled in other churches in Norway when they found out that this man is, he's fellowshipping with Andreasen. And so Pharaoh, he tried to scare him and say, hey, if you're going to do that, I'm going to make your situation worse. I'm going to make your situation bad. That's when we have a choice to make. We can, we can be scared and go, oh, oh no, no, this is going to cost too much. I'm going to go back. Hey, I'm going to back, back. Just leave me alone, Moses. Let me go back to my, no, we can't go back to the slavery. I want to go all the way, no matter what it's going to cost me. I'm willing and I'm ready. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. So when Moses withstood that, when Moses was strong, then God started to display his power. One plague after the other, God's power was displayed over Egypt. And finally, here comes the first confession of Pharaoh. And here comes his first offer on the negotiation table. We find it in Exodus chapter 8. I'm preaching about no compromise with Pharaoh. Exodus chapter 8. And we're going to read verse number, let me see here, 25. And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go ye sacrifice to your God in the land. So, good news. I'm not going to stop you from sacrifice. In other words, this is actually a confession. But he just, he don't want to word it like that. But it was actually a confession. I can't stop you from worship. I really can't stop. If you, are, if you have made up your mind to go worship God, I can't stop you. But I got a, I got, I got a good proposal for you. Because we can, we can, we can deal, we can, we can make up this as friends. So, so here's the deal. You, you worship God right here in Egypt. You don't have to leave Egypt. You don't have to travel three days out in the wilderness. And that's, that's a lot of work. I mean, you can just worship God right here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you one day off. To go worship your God and then, then, then we're all happy. You see, this is the kind of message that, have been, that are being preached in churches that have given in to this kind of compromise. Because they want to coexist with, with Pharaoh and with Egypt and they want to stay friends with Egypt. Let's just worship side by side. Let's just stay right here in Egypt. We don't have to leave anything. We don't have to change anything. We don't have to do anything. We can just worship right here. Hallelujah. But you see, to worship God, we got to get out of Egypt. Because the very first thing that we need to do is to repent. And repentance, it means to get out of Egypt. Repentance, it means to stop something and leave something and get away from something. Hallelujah. It means to make some changes in your life. You see, because the devil knows if he can take repentance away, he can take salvation away. Because the Bible says that God doesn't want anybody to perish, but that all should come to repentance. That means there's only two options. Repentance or perishing. He doesn't want anybody to perish, but he wants them to come to repentance. If you don't repent, you're going to perish. If you don't get out of Egypt, you're going to perish. There's no wonder that Pharaoh is satisfied with his solution because he's stealing their salvation. Just stay right here. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to change anything. Just, just remain who you are. I've heard it so many times. I'm so sick and tired of it. I am so sick and tired of it. You know, it's just, you don't have to do anything. You know, we say by grace and not by works. Going three days out of Egypt, that sounds like work to me. Traveling three days in the wilderness so far away from Egypt, you know, that, oh, that burning sun, that, that sounds like work. God said there shouldn't be any work. We don't have to do anything. They, they probably say that here in, in, in America too. In Norway, they say grace plus nothing equals salvation. Have you heard that before? Grace plus nothing equals, you don't have to do anything. Then I wonder. When they asked Peter on the day of Pentecost, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now Peter, if he was a good charismatic preacher, he would stand up and he would say, no, 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 no. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. Just believe. But that's not, that was not the response of Peter. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to get out of Egypt. You need to repent. You need to stop what you're doing. You need to change your lifestyle. And then you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. And then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah.
There's so many churches in Norway. And that's the reason that I came to the truth. It's because, it's because I had a dad that he loved God so much. He didn't have the revelation of the oneness of God. He didn't have the revelation of Jesus and baptism. But he had a love for God. And he was so grieved by the worldliness in the fellowship that we were in. The, in the denomination, uh, the Trinitarian Pentecostal denomination that we were in. He was so grieved by the worldliness. Because he had this hunger for God. And he understood that there's, there's something wrong. When you come into churches and, 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 you, and you realize that, that Egypt, hallelujah, is part of the, the service. Egypt is part of the church. There's a lot of Egypt in, in, the, in, the, in the, that's what my, my father, you know, he, he said and believed. That there's too much Egypt among us. And so when he took a step out, hallelujah, to get with some other families and, and realized, hallelujah, I want to get out of Egypt. I want to get away from this. And that's when God revealed the oneness of God to us. And that's when God started to pour his blessings, hallelujah, upon us. The Bible says, listen, the Bible says in the next verse, verse 26, and Moses said, it is not meet for to do so. It is not meet to do so for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, Shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? You see, you have to understand something, Pharaoh. The way we worship is an abomination to you. The only way any church can coexist in Egypt is that they change the way they worship. Because if they worship the way they were intended to worship, it's an abomination to Egypt. Hallelujah. I thought about it today as I was preparing and praying this morning. And God reminded me, hallelujah, there are certain things that is an abomination to God. So we have a choice to make. Do we want to worship in a way that is an abomination to Egypt? Or do we want to worship in a way that is an abomination to God? Hallelujah. I don't want to do anything that is an abomination to God. I could care less what Egypt think. I could care less what Pharaoh think. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, this is what I believe, everybody. I believe, and I believe I got Bible for it, that there is a connection between if I can use the word abomination for the Egyptians. So let me, let me say something else. The, 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 the stigma. Or the cross. The message of the cross. There is a connection between the, the foolishness and the stigma. And the abomination for the Egyptians. And the power of God. Because the Bible says that, that the word of the cross. I hope you understand what the word of the cross is. The word of the cross is anything that is painful for this flesh. The word of the cross is repentance. The word of the cross is holiness. The word of the cross is anything that you put on the altar and have to crucify for God. That's the word of the cross. The Bible says that's foolishness for the world. But unto us is the power unto salvation. So here is what I believe. You take the foolishness away. You take the power away. You take the stigma away. You take the power away. I want the power. I rather walk in the foolishness of the world and have the power of God in my life. It's foolishness for the world. It's an abomination to them. So he understood we need to get out from this place. We need to get out of here. Hallelujah. Because we want to worship God in the way we were intended to worship God. If you take the stigma away from the message, you take the power away from the message. You ask Samson. Samson experienced that. When he took the stigma away, when he cut his hair, suddenly the power went away from him. I know the world will never understand. I know the world will just, but let me tell you something. When the power of God starts to be 
Hallelujah, displayed. When the power of God starts to be demonstrated, when the power of God starts resting upon His people, they will see and they will understand and they will change their mind. You just stay with it, hallelujah. You just keep on walking the walk. You just keep on walking in that walk of foolishness because it's going to come a time when God's power is going to be so evident on your life that they will come to you. And they will say, I'm ready. Oh, hallelujah. No, we can't compromise. We, we have to get out of Egypt. We have to get away. You know, brother, what's his name? Uh, Tim Adams. He preached yesterday about Rebecca. And, uh, and I, I thought about it when he was preaching. That there was one stipulation that the servant told. Amen. To, 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 I mean, that Abraham told the servant that was going to find a wife for Isaac. And he said this, he said that um, if she somehow is not willing to come with you, you will be loose from this oath. And he had him to, to put his hand on his thigh and, and, and make an oath and promise. Uh, whatever you do, he said, you have to promise me. Don't ever take Isaac there. But you bring her here. We are not to bring Jesus to the world. We are not, I mean, we're not, to bring, we're not to bring Jesus into that environment. We're not to take them out of the environment and to Jesus. Jesus says, come unto me, come unto me, come out from among them and come to me. Hallelujah. Get out of Egypt. And so again, Pharaoh, he, he gets angry and he, he don't want to listen. And again, God has to display his power. And, and so he's pushing Pharaoh to another corner. And so and Pharaoh says in verse number 28, And Pharaoh said, I will let you go. Now he has already confessed. I'm going to let you sacrifice. Now he's willing to take one step further. He's, he's backing off one, one more. 100 yards. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. You can sacrifice. And I'm even going to let you leave Egypt. That's fine, fine. If you absolutely have to leave Egypt. But then he adds, just, just don't go too far. <laughs> don't take it too far now. It's okay that you're religious, but don't, 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 don't take it to the extreme. Don't go too far. I, I, I'm okay that you go to church on Sunday as long as I know you're back with me on Monday. Just don't go too far. I give you a little bit of religion as long as I know you always come back to me. Don't go far away. Just come back to me. I got news for Pharaoh, hallelujah. Not only are we going to leave Egypt, we're going to get as far away as we possibly can. Far away from Egypt. The angels told Lot, you need to get out of Sodom and don't look back. And you run until I tell you it's enough. Get away, far away, far away, far away. Run, run, run. You see, when you give in to the compromise of Pharaoh, step outside of Egypt, hallelujah. One day, you're back in Egypt. The other day, you're out there, you, know, you, you go back and forth like this. I don't know about you, but I'm so hungry, hallelujah, for a move of God, hallelujah. I'm so tired of Egypt. And I don't want to taste any of their food anymore. I don't want to smell anything of the things, hallelujah. I don't want to get far away, hallelujah, into the presence of God. Into the presence of the Almighty God. I can't wait for the day that I'm going to leave Egypt forever. Hallelujah. And never ever going to see anything of this again. Just being in His presence forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Just don't go too far. You know, there's a two types of Christians. There's a, there's a lot type of Christians. And there's an Abraham type of Christians. The Bible says that Lot, he pitched his tent all the way, close to Sodom as he possibly could. 
And the Bible says that Abraham, he drew near unto God. Amen. So, I don't know what kind of Christian you are. But there's, there ought to be something inside of you that want to just go closer and closer and closer to God. Hallelujah. If, if you always think, I'm, how close can I get to the world? Uh, hey, I, I want to stay outside. I, I'm, I'm outside of Egypt. I'm, I'm, I'm saved. I'm outside of Egypt. But, but I want to stay as close as possible. You're in the danger zone, my friend. You're in the danger zone. Hallelujah. Amen. Hear the warnings. and We need to learn. God orchestrated this only for you. He made all of this happen so you can sit here today and listen and learn from what they did. It was written for you and for me. Get far away from Egypt. Hallelujah. Amen. I, it's okay that you, you repent. You don't have to be baptized too. It's okay that you baptize. You don't, does it have to be in Jesus' name? It's okay that you feel God's presence, but do you have to speak in tongues? It's okay that you try to be modest and holy, but you don't have to go all Amish. Have you heard that before? My, don't, don't, don't take it. You, you're extreme, you know. You're too extreme. No, I'm not too extreme. Hallelujah. I just want to get far away. If, you know, I, I'm not saying that you can't be saved. I'm talking about your attitude and your hunger and your drive. Because I can promise you, if you stay close to the border, amen, he's going to make sure that he, that he erased that voice. You don't know, really know where the borderline goes and, and suddenly you are coming over on the wrong side without even knowing it. But if you're far away, I want to make it to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. So, again, Pharaoh resists, and, and again, Moses resists to give in to the compromise of Pharaoh and say, no, 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 no. We're going to sacrifice. We're going to get out of Egypt, and we're going to go far away. So he just makes it clear, and God backs it up with his power. I just love it. Every time you stand for truth, and you take a stand, and you don't really know what it's going to cost you, God's going to back it up with his power. So he says, chapter 10, Exodus chapter 10 and verse number 10. And he said unto them, let the Lord be so with you. Oh, listen to Pharaoh. Let the Lord be so with you as I will let you go. And your little ones look to it for evil is before you. Not so. Go now you that are men and serve the Lord for you. For that you did, for that you did desire. That's what you desired. That's what you wanted. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. So what, God, what Pharaoh is saying here is that, okay, you're so stubborn. I'll, I'll let you sacrifice. I'll, I'll let you go. i even let you go far away. Go as far as you want. Just, just leave your children with me. You, you leave the little ones here. I understand that you're a lost cause. I, I can't do anything about you. I, 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 can't, I can't change your mind. That's fine. Then I'm going for the next generation. If I can't have you, I'm going to take your children. That's why it's so important, everybody, that we bring our children to the worship place. That we bring our children with us. No, you're not going to have my children, Pharaoh. You're not going to have my children. We're going to worship and I'm having my children with me. Oh, hallelujah. Because Pharaoh knows if you give me your children, it's only a matter of time until I have the whole next generation. And that's what's happening right now in Norway. All over Norway, this is what's happening. The churches are just filled with old people. There's no young people there. There's no children there. Where are they? Well, mom and dad went to prayer meeting. They gave the iPad to them. When mom and dad went to pray, they put on a cartoon for the, for the kids just so they wouldn't bother them, just to get them out of the way. Let me tell you something. We need to take our children with us. We must have them with us. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
We just had a conference in Oslo. Go breaking the chains. And uh, one of the nights we had 13 children receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I'm never going to forget that sight. They all, we had the longest service in the history of Norway on that day. And some of the Sunday school teachers, they came to me and they said, you know, we don't know what to do with the children anymore if this service doesn't stop soon. They're getting crazy in there. I said, you bring them to the altar. Oh no, they, they, they are so tired. They can't go to the altar and pray right now. And we decided, no, bring them to the altar. And we brought them to the altar. And God started to fill them with the Holy Ghost. And some of the children, they prayed for more than one hour. More than one hour they prayed, tears flowing down their face, speaking in tongues, praying to God, hallelujah. No, Pharaoh, you're not going to have my children. They're going to come. Come with us. Let's go worship. Come on, let's go worship. Uh, I remember when. My next oldest daughter, Rebecca, when she was six years old. I may have told this story here before. I don't, I don't remember. But when she was six years old, we had an altar service in Oslo. And people crying and praying and shouting and dancing. And, and, I, and, I, and I took Rebecca and I said, Rebecca, you come here. She was six years old. I took her by the hand. I said, come here. And I brought her into the midst of the altar service. And I said, Rebecca, close your eyes. And she closed her eyes. And I said, Rebecca, what you're feeling right here is the presence of the Almighty God. I said, when you grow up, never forget this feeling. Never forget what you felt right here because this is the true presence of God. I'm telling you, you can let Rebecca walk blindfolded into any type of church and she's going to tell a difference if this is the presence of God or if this is the presence of Egypt. Because she's been at the place of worship. She knows the difference. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not trying to brag today. I'm not trying to be any arrogant in any way. Because it's just by the grace of God. But I still believe the reason why Benedicta Victoria is here today, the reason why Charlotte and Rebecca, my other two daughters, are active in the ministry in the church today, is because we brought them to the place of worship. Yeah. Hallelujah. I remember Benedicta. Hallelujah, Benedicta. Why don't you wave your hand, Benedicta? Come on, she hates this. Hallelujah. When she was eight years old, she received the gift of the Holy Ghost, you know, in the pre-prayer pre service, you know, when we pray before service, she received the Holy Ghost. And the next week, a friend of her came to church. She was nine years old. And so we had invitation people to come and receive the Holy Ghost. And then the friend of her came to the altar. And I said to, I said to Benedicta, I said, Benedicta, you got the Holy Ghost now. I said, you go pray for your friend that she received the Holy Ghost. And so... I'm trying to sound more spiritual than I am because I kind of just, in my mind, I thought, well, kind of cute. As I was praying for people, then I turned around and she was not playing. I mean, she heard what, she, what, what her dad said. I turn around and I see this eight-year-old girl with her hand on the forehead of that nine-year-old girl. Both of them just tears streaming down their face and they're both speaking in tongues in the most powerful way you've ever seen. Hallelujah. The children wants to get involved in this. They want to be part of this. They want to be part of the worship. They want to feel the power of God. So no Pharaoh. You can't have my children. I won't let you have my children. Hallelujah. But, uh, but it's so late. You know, we, they got to school tomorrow. And, uh, and we just got him into the. I don't know if you have that here. But we, we have it. I know you have it here. <laughs> but I've seen it so many times when the kids get involved. Thank you, Bishop. We're talking about sports. When I grew up, I was the only one in my church. The only one that I knew in Norway. That was not allowed to play on the soccer team. That was my, I, I, I so desperately wanted to have that. We had a nice jersey. Red, white, and blue stripe right over here. And. 
The name of the soccer team was Dreev. Oh, I wanted to play for Dreev. I, I, so, and I played soccer every day with my friends. And they went to play with this nice. But my dad said, no. We have church on Sunday. I've seen it in our church. Parents that let their kids get involved in sports. And they stay away from church. From their nine years old until they're 50. That's the most valuable age. That's when they need to be in church. That's when they need to feel the presence of God. Let me hurry. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm just stay with you. I'm soon done. Hallelujah. In verse number 23, verse chapter 10, last point, um, last offer from Pharaoh, last confession. They saw, let me see here. Verse, I'm sorry, verse 24. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. So now he's okay with that also. He's just backing up. Another hundred yards. First he was, I'm not going to let you sacrifice. It's okay. Go sacrifice. Then he said, I'm not going to let you leave Egypt. Okay. Leave Egypt. I'm not going to let you go far. Okay. Go far. I'm not going to let you have your children. Okay. I can't stop you from having your children. Last attempt of compromise was just leave your flocks here. Leave your goods with me. Because Jesus said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. I'll let you go if I can just have your heart. Just leave your heart in Egypt and you can go as far as you want. Jesus said, they worship me with lips, but the hearts are far away from me. It's on another place. You got to take your heart with you. And you can't take your heart with you unless you take the goods with you. Because the devil, he wants to present a religion that doesn't cost anything. Christian churches and Christian preachers that are preaching a gospel that doesn't cost anything. They've been sitting down at the table with Pharaoh. Because this thing costs. Jesus said, if you don't take up your cross and follow me every day, you're not even worthy of being called my, my, my son and my daughter. It's going to cost you something. The last thing that we give up is our wallet. We're willing to give everything else, but there's something we hold on to to the last minutes. When we let that go, oh my Lord, hallelujah. We're going to see the greatest revival that we've ever seen. Thank you so much again, Bishop Holmes, which you said yesterday, hallelujah, about leaving a legacy. I told him, I told Bishop that I remember when I was 19 years old. I was driving a car and my mother was driving. I was sitting in the back seat and, and it was a winter a snow, snowy road in the winter time and she lost control of the car and the car started to spin around in the middle of the highway and we had cars passing us on both sides. So when finally the car, car stopped spinning and I looked around and I realized, hey, we're in the middle of the highway. We have cars passing us 100 kilometers per hour in each side. At that moment, I realized I, I, I could have died. This, is, this, is, this could have been it. And I... And I remember so well, I prayed and I, I, said, I said to God, God, if I came to meet you now, I wouldn't have anything to present to you. What have I ever done for you? And at that, when, we, when we drove home that, that night in the, in the backseat of the car, I remember so well, I prayed. I said, God, I know the rest of my life is a bonus that you've given me. I want to give my life to you. I want to serve you. I want to make sure that if I ever come to this situation again, I want to be ready to meet you. Because this thing is going to cost us something. Hallelujah. But it's going to be worth it all, everybody. It's going to be worth it all. You know, when, when God lets, when God let Lot and his wife out of Sodom. The Bible says that the, 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 the wife of Lot, she hesitated. You know, she, 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 so finally, amen, the angels had to take her by the hand and drive her, run her out. By the grace of God out of Sodom. 
And you know the story. Then suddenly somewhere in the distance between Sodom and then the place in the mountain that God told him to escape to, she turned around. And I, I, I preached a sermon many years ago in our church in Oslo that I entitled that God had her hand, but Sodom had her heart. There's too many people, they are in church, they look like everybody else. You even dress modestly, you do whatever needs to be, 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 be done, hallelujah. Amen. You, God has your hand, but your heart is somewhere else, hallelujah. Your heart is still in the wrong place. Let me, let me tell you something today, hallelujah. Amen. Follow that hand, follow that leaning of the, of the angel that is coming. Oh, what is the angel? The angel is the messenger, is the preacher, is the pastor. Let him take you by the hand and say, guide me, lead me far away from Sodom. It's not going to cost anything, you know. The, Isaac, he said to Abraham, here's the wood, here's the fire, but, but where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? I believe there's a lot of Christian lives today. God can come into their lives and say, I, I see your Bible. I see your church going. I see your attendance, but where's your sacrifice? I see you, you pay hallelujah in the offering basket, but, but where's your sacrifice? This type of worship, and, and Moses made it clear, no, we, we're going to have the cattle with us. And he said something powerful, I'm, I'm ending now, but he said something powerful. Listen, listen to this, you're going to love this, hallelujah. Verse number 26, our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not a hoof be left behind. Nothing. I'm going to worship God, hallelujah, with my family, with my children, with my money, with my home. I'm going to worship Him at my work. I'm going to worship Him, hallelujah, when I go to the store. I'm going to worship Him wherever I am. Not a hoof. You're not going to have anything, Pharaoh. I'm not giving you one little bit. I'm not going to give you anything. Hallelujah. I wish you may be staying with me here, but I wish that Pharaoh wouldn't interrupt Moses because at that point he got so mad. And he said, if you ever show yourself here again, if I see your face again, you're a dead man. But I wish that Pharaoh wouldn't have interrupted Moses because Moses had one more thing to say. He didn't say it. But I think the only reason is because Pharaoh didn't allow him to say it. But if he had let Moses continue to speak, Moses would have said this. Pharaoh, not even a hoof. We'll build it. We're going to take everything we have with us. As a matter of fact, not only will we take everything that we have with us, we're going to take everything of yours too. Because the Bible says in Exodus 4.22, But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor, and her, her that sojourneth her in her house, jewels and silver, and jewels of gold and raiment, and, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and you shall spoil the Egyptians. Pharaoh, we're going to go build a tabernacle, and you're going to pay for it. This end time revival, I'm telling you, it's not enough money here to pay it, but the world's going to pay for it. The devil's going to pay for it. He's going to have businesses, he's going to have things given to us, God's going to stir people's heart. And Pharaoh, you listen to me today, we're not going to compromise with you. We're going to go, hallelujah, have the massive exodus out of Egypt and the greatest revival this world has ever seen because we refuse to compromise with Pharaoh. Oh, come on, step out from where you are. Come to this front. Let's lift our hands. No compromise. Oh! Yes! <laughs> oh my God.
Come on, reach over and join up with somebody. Come on, let's pray. The Holy Ghost is in this house. There's no compromise with Pharaoh. Come on. Come on, receive the word that's been preached in this house. Come on. to you and let's support one another you don't know the battle you don't know the trouble that someone may be going through the voices that they're hearing the enemy's voice that's trying to get them to change trying to get them to do something come on or the fight the struggle to maintain or to keep the enemy at bay come on let's pray for one another Let's strengthen one another. That's what this camp meeting's about. Come on, let's strengthen one another. Yada bahasha yada. Hey!
lift your voice. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I'm so glad that you got to hear Brother Andreas and hear this afternoon. What a powerful word from God we have heard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has blessed our church numerous times. I'm so thankful he was able to be a part of this camp meeting service today. Tonight's going to be an, just an incredible evening. The Holy Ghost is going to be here in a special way. Brother Nathaniel Urshan will be preaching in the service this evening. Church begins at 7. Of course, we're going to do our best to accommodate everybody we're, we have overflow out in the chapel, or in the chapel, in the rotunda, so we want you to come. Let's have a great Holy Ghost time in this service tonight. God bless you for being here today. We'll see you back here in just a few hours.